The Lord said, talking to His disciples, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth into life, and few there be that find it. Amen. Now, we can count our, our blessed Lord. He was always right up front with us. He told us um, how the way it's going to be in the kingdom. He's telling us here that uh, it will not be easy in the kingdom, and there will be few that find it. Matter of fact, you could gather from the way the Lord describes it here that if a, if, um, if a person was to uh, approach the kingdom like it was an easy thing to do, they would probably just miss out yeah. on the whole thing yeah. because you can, from the way he describes it here, yeah. it's, it's, it's going to require some diligence and some effort. Uh, I mean, if we really didn't want the kingdom of God, if you really don't want the kingdom of God, then uh, you will not have it. In other words, so you're going to, it's, it's something you're going to want, you want. The kingdom of God is something you want. In Philippians 3.14, Paul writes, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, we know that Paul was apprehended by the Lord for this reason on the road to Damascus. And uh, just like all men are apprehended by God and called of God, not perhaps as dramatic as Paul's encounter on the Damascus road, but nevertheless, all men are called and apprehended by God. And, and, uh, and all men are called to stop and what they're doing. Now, Paul realized uh, he was apprehended by the Lord for reason. And in this third chapter of Philippians, Paul gives the reason. And in this place, he doesn't say anything. He doesn't mention anything about his commission that he was given at this time, about turning men uh, from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. He doesn't mention that here. No, Paul calls to point something entirely different than that. The real thing for Paul... His quest for glory was winning Christ. Amen. In his estimation, this was a number one thing was to be found in Him. Uh -huh. Now, uh, we can tell one another that we must press our way to glory. And uh, that's what the Lord was telling the disciples there, that, that scripture I just read, that you're going to have to press your way into glory. We can tell one another this, and we do. But you know, it works a whole lot better if, brother can, if brethren can come to this conclusion on their own. You know, kind of pick up on it like Paul did. Yes, yes. Paul knew it. Paul knew he was never going to be perfect in the Lord like he wanted until he saw the Lord face to face. Now you can pick it up the way he taught. He knew that day that everything was going to be all right. That's the reason he said, I press. He realized that if he, did, if, if he didn't, that he wouldn't. That he wouldn't make it to glory. This is the Apostle Paul saying these things too. Now in the next few minutes, in just a few minutes, I want to read them backwards from this verse and look at some things. Uh, Paul was what Paul was pressing for and why he was pressing and the manner in which he was pressing. What I mean, what was Paul's countenance as he was pressing the glory? He wasn't just pressing. There was, there, was a, there was a way Paul was pressing. There was a frame of mind. When you take a, look, a real good look at this text, it, 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 uh, it poses some real questions for all of us. Some questions just naturally pop up that we could ask ourselves. When the Lord Jesus confronted Paul, I can imagine the Lord having this thought, uh, something like, Hallelujah, I have found him, the one in whom my soul has longed. Yeah, I, I, I knew, I knew he, he, he must have felt that this is the Lord. This is I was off track, but now I have the Lord. Paul got a taste of the grace of God on that day, and he never lost his vision for it. Now, even at, at that, though, Paul was prompted to write here in the third chapter, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. Now, he could, even though he, he had a taste for glory and he pursued God, he knew that he hadn't arrived. Now, as soon as we're put into the kingdom of God, we are made to walk in heavenly places immediately. As soon as we come into the kingdom, at that point, you can walk in heavenly places. That is, we're raised up together and made to sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. That's when we come into the kingdom, brethren. We can do this. Now, no one can do this, uh, go to the heavenly places, um, even by faith, unless they've been made really perfect. Okay, you don't come... 
into the heavenly places unless you've really been made righteous, unless you've been really made clean. It's a state of perfection that's given to us through faith, which is a real and authentic uh, perfection. It's real. It's real enough so that we can sit in the heavenly places where Christ is seated. Paul is speaking about, though, although Paul is speaking about that full perfection, that's what he was after. When our faith has carried us to glory and when our race is completed and, and we've run our race, and when this flesh is put away and we know full perfection, and when we put on our house, which is from heaven, our dwelling made without hands, eternal in the heavens, Paul wanted to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. You see, Paul was looking forward forward to the time when he would realize the fullness, the fullness of being apprehended by Jesus on that day. And so for this reason, Paul had a particular stance and a particular viewpoint mm -hmm. when he pursued Christ. And one of these was, the grace of God is sufficient for me. I don't need anything else. So he was able to forget those things which were behind. And he reached forward to those things which were before and so uh, we cannot traffic in the things of God and our defiled self the way we were. So we, we must be born again and we must be made new so we can, we can uh, uh, enter into those things not having mine own righteousness, Paul said, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And this is the condition of all the saints of God. To be found in Him, Paul says, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Mm -hmm. Now this is the only way a person can come into the heavenly places. In this world and in the world to come. That's the way we, we proceed to God. But Paul, uh, Paul talks about a rule in verse 16. He said, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Paul is saying that all the saints should think the same thing. Now, what is he talking about? And in, in what manner should all the saints be of the same mind? Uh, uh, what does he mean by that? What was he referring to specifically? Now, the rule is this, that we must forsake confidence in all things, like Paul did, that we may glory in Christ's righteousness Amen. alone and, and Him and we need to desire His righteousness above everything else and seek after the fellowship in His sufferings. This is the way by which we are ushered in into that blessed resurrection. This is exactly the things that Paul had enumerated in this above passage. Now the King James Word uses the word rule here, which is a good word. But the, the word has a meaning in it which would indicate set boundaries. Not just like a principle or a law or something. It, has, it means boundaries. And this is perfectly the idea that Paul has when he talks about, a, a, speaks of a, a runner running a race. It's God's rule, Paul said. And it's a prescribed course laid out by Him. It dictates the course of the run. The boundaries for our run to glory, that is. It's positioned and it's arranged by God. It's His rule. Paul is telling the brethren, these are, these are the boundaries of the kingdom that I've just described to you. This which has been laid out by God. And this is how, this is in the frame of mind. This is, the main, this is the mind of all the saints as we run. While there are preachers and teachers I know today who will tell others it doesn't really matter which way you run, how you run, and why you run. Paul says it does matter how you do. We cannot be pursuing different things in the name of Christ. It's all got to be like the way Paul said, because he understood the boundaries of the kingdom and of the run. We are running together, brethren. And we are all set on the same course. Some, the same as in the one who set the course, is one um, who has set the course for us as he is one why we run is to be found in him where we run we run to Christ and how we press is in his righteousness we press uh, and all of these things are determined by the one who changes not eternal eternal purpose for all things is set by him in that sense brethren we uh, we're all on the same course and we run to glory as brethren now if we run and press in the righteousness which is of God in Christ Jesus by faith which is through the faith 
of Christ Jesus, if we run forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before, then we shall know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings being conformable unto His death. Thank you, brother. Amen. Amen.